I am Brother Stephen Elabo, welcoming you to Deeper Life Bible Church, Charlottesville, United States, a place where the undiluted Word of God is being preached. You are about to listen to our general superintendent, Pastor W.F. Kumoye, as a comfort to share the mind of God with you and your family. I want you to be ready to pick up your pen and your paper and jot down important messages as they will do you good. God bless you and remain blessed. Bible there. We're looking at Ezekiel chapter 43. Ezekiel has a message for you. Ezekiel has a ministration for you. He wants to tell you something. Something that will bring the extraordinary power of God into your life. Ezekiel chapter 43. I'm reading from verse 1. It says, After watch. He brought me to the gate, even the gate that Lucas. The God of Israel came from the way of the east, and his voice was like a noise of many waters, and the earth shined. In his glory. You find that word glory two times in that verse 2. As you look at the nation of Israel, it was a nation that knew the glory of God. A nation that experienced the glory of God. A nation that enjoyed the glory of God. But something happened to Israel. And because of what they did, the Lord took the glory away. And now Ezekiel is telling us, have you seen? Have you noticed? Have you felt the absence of the glory of God? But Ezekiel is not stopping there. He doesn't need to come and tell us the absence of the glory of God from Israel. He doesn't need to come and tell you the absence of the glory of God and the power of God and the presence of God in your life in your family but it's going beyond that but first of all the absence of the glory look at verse 3 here it tells us and it was according to the appearance of the vision which i saw even according to the vision that i saw when i came to destroy the city that's when the glory departed and now it says and the vision, the visions were like the vision that I saw by the river Kiba, and I fell upon my face. Look at verse 4. It says, and the glory of the Lord came. Our time has come. Somebody there, I said our time has come. The glory of the Lord is coming back. Coming back to your life. Coming back to your family. Coming back to the community and coming back to our country. It says in verse 4, And the glory of the Lord came into the house by the way of the gate whose prospect is toward the east. But you see, it hasn't stopped. Because it tells us, number one, the absence of the glory. Number two, it tells us of the appearance of the glory. Now it comes to verse 5. So the Spirit of the Lord took me up. The Spirit of the Lord will take you up today. Higher ground. I said higher ground. He said the Spirit of the Lord took me up and he brought me into the inner court. And behold, the glory of the Lord... If you have your Bible there, tell me the next word there. Filled the house. That's talking about abundance. Abundance. The abundance of the glory of God, Ezekiel said, is coming from, number one, the absence of the glory of God. Number two, it comes to the appearance of the glory of God. Number three, before he leaves you, and before you leave here tonight, the abundance of the glory of God. Let the believer say, Amen. So many years before this time, all through the time of a man called Eli, because of the sin that came into the nation, 
when the child was born, the child was named Ichabod. That means the glory has departed. A lost glory. You see, keep up the children of Israel. Look at them coming out of Egypt. See the glory. Actually, Moses prayed. He said, Lord, show me your glory. And the Lord showed him his glory. What power was in that nation? The healing in that nation. Deliverance in that nation. Abundance in that nation. Provision in that nation. Prosperity in that nation. Progress in that nation. And it went on like that and on like that because of the glory. Where the glory of the Lord is, there is power. Where the glory of the Lord is, is the presence of the Lord. Where the glory of the Lord is, problems are solved. That's why you are here tonight. The glory will come upon your life. But then the children of Israel did not continue in that glory of the Lord. And so what was visible, what was present, what was real, what was apparent in the lives of the children of Israel. And that's why one of them, Gideon, said, My Lord, where are all the miracles that our fathers told us of? Because now they came under oppression. And they came under depression. And there were problems in that nation. Because of Icabod. The glory departed. The glory gone. Now Ezekiel is going to tell us that this glory is coming back. I see somebody there. Glory is coming back. I see that paralyzed person there. Glory is coming upon your life today in Jesus' name. I see those who are blind. I cannot see the light. I cannot see anything. Wait a moment. When the glory comes tonight, those blind eyes will open. Give me an Abuja. Amen. And whatever it is, you're kind of, you're bound over there. It's a loss of the glory. When the glory comes tonight, because it's coming. I said it's coming. Somebody there, I said it's coming. When the glory comes tonight, all those mountains, it will roll away. All those chains, it will break. All those shackles, it will break. Something new is coming upon your life tonight in Jesus' name. You know, eventually, you know, eventually, the children of Israel, because the glory was gone, they went into captivity. Here they were in Babylon. They couldn't even sing anymore. They lost their song. They lost their testimony. They lost the power and the presence of God because the glory was gone until, until, until some prophets began to pray. Jeremiah prayed. Daniel prayed. Ezekiel prayed. And the Lord God in heaven answered. We are praying tonight and God is. you you want glory you'll not just sit back there and say okay i cross my leg i fold my hand if glory is going to come let it come you have a part to play and as you do your part and we pray and we pray together look at this glory is coming power is coming authority is coming an anointing is coming. The anointing that breaks every yoke, all the yokes in your life, they are broken tonight in Jesus' name. Let, before, before I tell you what topic I'm talking about, let me show you one verse of scripture. If you don't have your Bible, just listen to me. Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 36, and I'm reading from verse 11. Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 11 and I will multiply upon you man and beast first of all addition of blessing is coming upon your life number two a multiplication of blessing is coming upon your life you will not go smaller you'll go greater you'll go higher because there is a multiplication tonight. I will multiply man and beast, and they shall increase. You will increase tonight. And bring fruit. You will be fruitful tonight. Barrenness is cancelled tonight in Jesus' name. And then it says, and I will settle you. Anybody want you to be settled there? I said, anybody there want you to be settled? 
This is the night of settlement. It will settle everything. And I will settle you at your old estate. And I will do listen to this. And I will do listen to this. And I will do better things unto you than at your beginning. I thought Abuja people knew what to say. Amen. I will do better things unto you than at your beginnings. And you shall know that I am the Lord. When the glory comes, the better things are here already. I'm talking to you tonight on the extraordinary wonder of his returning glory. Extraordinary wonder of his returning glory. But I'm going to go with his sequel. And I'm going to ask Ezekiel, Ezekiel, if you, if you have time, you read the book of Ezekiel from the uh, first chapters. It's talking about glory, glory, glory of God and glory of the Lord. And then as you ask Ezekiel, how will this come? And Ezekiel says, I'm going to take you through a journey and stay with me. Number one is the misery of the absence of God's glory, the misery. The sadness, the suffering, the sorrow, the predicament, the bad, bad things that happen to the people that are experiencing the absence of God's glory. The mystery of the absence of God's glory. Number two, the miracle of the appearance of God's glory. That glory is going to appear tonight. And when it comes, look at miracle. When it comes, look at miracle, overflowing miracle in your life in Jesus' name. The miracle of the absence of the appearance of God's glory. Number three, the manifestation. Somebody is having a manifestation tonight. Who am I talking to there? Who am I talking to over there? Manifestation. I said manifestation. Help me shout the word manifestation. The manifestation of the abundance of God's glory. Number one, the absence. Number two, the appearance. Number three, the abundance. Number one, the mystery. Number two, the miracle. Number three, the manifestation. Come to number one now. And it's the mystery of the absence of God's glory. We all need glory. We all need power. We all need blessing. And thank God you are here tonight for blessing. But you know, if you lost something, and you didn't know where you lost it, how you lost it, why you lost it, and you didn't know how to retrace your step, you will not know how to get it back. That's why Ezekiel is telling us, actually calling upon the nation of Israel. He said, Israel, do you know what brought the absence of the glory of God? He said, Israel, do you know what brought the mystery and the suffering and the sickness and the sorrow and all the problems that come along with the absence of God's glory? And I is going to tell us, because as you look at your life, you see, there are many people, and it is a mark of human frailty, the mark of human weakness, and the mark of human hypocrisy, that whatever challenge I have, we lay it on other people. It's because that happened. Other people, that's what they did. And it is because of what they did, that is why I am where I am. That, that's what the children of Israel were saying. Look at this. Ezekiel chapter 18. Ezekiel chapter 18. And in verse 2. Actually from verse 1. The word of the Lord came unto me saying. What mean ye? That ye use this proverb. Concerning the land of Israel. Saying. The fathers have eaten sour grapes. And the children's teeth are set on edge. The children of Israel, they didn't look at themselves. And that's what we do. We say, there's a witch somewhere. That's the cause of my problem. They say, there's somebody in the village somewhere. That's the receipt for my problem. We never, generally, we never trace the problem to our own doorstep. 
that is because of what you did. It's because of what your life was. It's because of the wrong attitude. It's because of the wrong action. But we say it's so and so. That's why that's what he was saying. He said, It's our fathers. If I, it's our fathers, if our fathers were all right, we would have been all right. He said. For saying, if you keep on like that, the glory will never return. If you keep on laying blame, if you keep on, and you are not owning responsibility for your life, and you are not saying, it's me, I'm the sinner, it's me, I'm the backslider, it's me, I'm the evil doer, as long as you are pointing to other people, they are the cause of my problems. That the people that do not allow me to rise tonight, all those excuses are cut off in Jesus' name. You will take the bull by the horn and you will say, My destiny will change. Am I talking to somebody there? You will say, My situation will change. You'll not say, It's one mama somewhere in the village. It's one papa somewhere by the riverside. It's somewhere by the forest. And that's what they're doing tonight. You come and you say, I am the one. I am the one. I went away from the Lord. I pursued the Lord. And because of what I've done, that is not right. That's why I'm going through this. I'm going through this. I'm going through this. And then you return to the Lord. Somebody that's returning to the Lord today. And the Lord will return to you. And the glory of God will come upon your life in Jesus' name. Now, Ezekiel, tell me. Ezekiel, tell us. Why the mystery? Tell us. Why the sickness? Tell us. Why the problem? Are you ready to listen? Somebody there, are you ready to listen? I'm looking at Ezekiel chapter 13. It says, this is where our problem began. He said, this is where your problem began. We became mixed up. We called good evil. We called evil good. We encouraged evil. You encouraged evil. Might be at your backyard. Might be at the playing ground. Might be in your school. Might be in your family. Might be on your farm, might be in your place of work, and because of what we have done, we have contributed to the suffering in our lives. Ezekiel chapter 13. Let me tell you, let me show you what it says. It says, Because, because, because what lies, ye have made the heart of the righteous such. You know, there are people that put down righteousness, they put down holiness. They put down upright lives. And they say, uh -huh, holy, holy people. You know, in the office, somebody wants to change something that you shouldn't change. And then you say, should we do that? Will that be right? Is that not the caution we're talking about? Uh -huh, don't bring that one here. You know, here we are walking. Don't be, don't be coming.